All right. Welcome to the May 1st May Day Aries Working Group Call. Um, holiday in much of the world, so that could be why there's a few people missing. But anyway, happy May Day to all. Um, new VCDI attachment format. There was an issue raised about that, and I'm um, hoping to talk about that. I've got some Aries RFC PRs, and in particular, um, changing the RFC status of some PRs that I would like attention focused on. I don't know if this is the right call because we have a, a a smaller than normal group on, but um, we can talk about that. Mediation. I don't think I put that on the agenda, so I'm not sure where that comes from. So hopefully we'll find out. Um, we are recording the call and um, it is a Linux Foundation Hyperledger Foundation meeting. So the antitrust policy is in effect, which is on your screen. The code of conduct is linked here, the Hyperledger code of conduct. Um, welcome to edit this and add your uh, name to the agenda. So the agenda um, link page has been linked in the chat. Um, are there any welcomes or introductions? Um, people want to introduce themselves. Um, and is there any other announcements or agenda suggestions at this point? So. Raise your hand or just step up to the mic if you want. I just want to add in there that mediation is probably related to last week where we talked about the uh, pickup protocol and how that uh, should be handled. Okay. I am not the expert on that in any way, shape, or form, so hopefully someone knows about it. Um. Okay, um, release status and work updates. Um, Akapai 0.12.1 will be released today. It hasn't been released yet, so I had to add that today. We'll, I'll be doing that um, or, or doing some of the tagging work um, later this uh, uh, today. Um, but 0.12.1 is complete. That gets us, I believe, to all of the unqualified bids issues um 12.0 got most of it but there was a couple of things found in edge cases that um made uh that had to be addressed so 12.1 is coming out um, once we do that we'll be merging um, several prs that are pending and tagging a release candidate of 1.0 of akapai so we're glad to see that milestone um met um next up in in the Akapai realm, um, work's going on in D Didcom V2. And um, hopefully we'll hear um, a bit of first impressions on the Akapai meeting yesterday. We had a, a demo and, and uh, an overview of some of the work done. And we just wanted to capture a, a few moments of that. Um, at IIW, um, the BC Gov team, myself included, introduced a thing called Trust Did Web, or if you say it really fast, Trusted Web. And um, that's a new um, did method. And um, so we're looking at adding support for it in Akapai and what that would mean. So that is a did web like um, did method, but with history and verification uh, and a unique identifier in the did uh, allowing for portability. So I'm happy to talk about that for anyone that's interested. Um, reorganize this a bit. Any other announcements, um, release status, or other announcements? I know that Credo released 52052. I believe that went official. So that's good to know. All right. Um, I noticed we had some failures in the Aries uh, agent test harness, so we've got to take a look at uh, what's going on in that. Um, something changed recently that um, reduced the number of passing tests, so we'll have to take a look at, at what that was and in which, um, which implementation. All right. Um, I am not seeing Patrick here. And quite frankly, I read through. So um, this issue, I'll just briefly touch on it and, and people can take a look. Um, RFC 809 is a new verifiable credential, uh, an attachment 
to the issuance um, issue credential protocol. And it is to, intended to be used with um, what we formerly called JSON LD credentials, now called data integrity VCs, um, uh, VCs that use the VC-DI VC data integrity spec. So it's an attachment that was introduced in the fall. And um, um, is was used in the implementation of the uh, Anon creds in W3C format. So it enabled, um, added the offer attachment format and tweaked the um, other credential, uh, the other attachments for um, the request and the issue. Um, Patrick put in a, a proposed change to the protocol or to the attachment format. Um, it looked like to me, it just moves things around. So I don't know enough about um, what his goal was in putting that in. So um, suggest that um, folks take a look at this um, PR and um, we'll take a look at it, but uh, Without Patrick here to present it and talk about those ideas, um, I'm, I'm actually not able to continue with it. So apologies. Anyone with any other comments on that? It's a pretty lame topic. Okay. Um, in a recent um, PR that I put in, so when we uh, when I implemented um, this website, which is a presentation of the various um, Aries protocols, um, included in it were, you know, the list of AIP two um, protocols, including um, down to the the commit that is used for the AIP2 protocol. And in addition, there is the latest version of all of the other uh, um, protocols. And um, it's this list that is very, very long. <laughs> um, so what we've had is a whole bunch of, um, of protocols that got to the proposed state and then never moved forward from there. So DIDCOM over XMPP was proposed. It's it's there, um, but at this point, it's very unlikely um, to ever be implemented and to move forward. So what I suggested in this is we add a status called stalled, which left the door open for um, a protocol to be discovered, um, someone to get excited about it, move forward to demonstrating it, and the community moving forward to accepting it, but also gets it out of, um, if that isn't ever going to happen, gets it more into the end state of retired um, for it. So retired would have gone through to at least demonstrate it, accept it, or adopt it, and then to retire. Stalled is to say it got to propose, but nobody did anything about it, so we moved it away from there. So that's the idea of the stalled state. Um, so I proposed, um, and I've got a PR in that, that implements the stalled state and moves a whole bunch, as you can see, of, of items to the stalled state. And then adds a, a few other ones that are in proposed, but have certainly been demonstrated. So a couple of other updates. And then um, James um, kicked in on, on suggesting that we move even more things around. And in particular, things that were in AIP 1 and 2 um, get moved to adopted, since clearly they're implemented and in use, in production use. Um, so with that said, I came up with this spreadsheet because spreadsheets are good. Um, 
what I would love to see out of this is that we agree or or we find any objections to moving specific RFCs into uh, a new state. We'll start with the ones that I suggested, and then we get to the ones that James suggested. Um, I don't quite know how to do this. Um, I don't want to go through every one of these. Um, but um, I would like to get some of these moved off. So, um, yeah, I guess I'm just looking for objections. I'm going to go through a few of them that are more la uh, are more interesting or or either slam dunks or ones that I have a background in and to give an overview and to give people a chance to object. But the main thing here is a any objections to this? And if not, if so, I will make the change to the PR. If not, I would propose to get the PR uh, approved. So um, O29 message trust context um, demonstrated is a stretch on that term. It, it was the idea that um, a connection have um, layers of trust. Um, and so, for example, when you establish the connection, it's minimally trusted when you share a verifiable credential one way or the other that the trust of the channel can be upgraded to some known level. Um, I don't think there's any sort of movement as to implementing that or 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 applying it or if it's any way useful other than to, for instance, a controller that decides to implement that. It's got nothing to do with a interoperable protocol, I don't think. So move it to stalled. DKMS is a work that Evernim did uh, under contract from DHS on what a distributed key management system was. And it's got lots of things that met their requirement for the contract. And in in many ways, it is implemented as Aries, but um, there really is no reason to um, to keep it around. It's it's 2016 ideas that have evolved considerably since then and are not likely to be changed. Um, credential fraud threat models, interesting, but doesn't really have a place in DITCOM or DITCOM protocols. Linkable message paths, don't even know what it is, so not much I can say about that one. Um, rich schemas, um, so there's several in here on rich schema. Rich schema is the idea of how to get, it was the initial idea of getting a non-creds into W3C format by adding a bunch of, of objects and um, other things. Um, Rich Schemas has not gone anywhere, and so um, propose moving it to stalled. Um, I, I went from retired to stalled because I'm not sure how it got to retired in, in, in the definition I used. It never made it anywhere beyond proposed, so it would go to stalled, but there's a bunch of them in here. Private credential issuance is the idea that a what we normally think of a holder, a person could issue credentials. Um, again, a super interesting idea, but I don't see any progress being made on that, especially in the non-creds context. Um, certainly in a in a non and non creds where we don't care about linkability, um, this becomes an interesting option. Um, and private credentials are, definitely have an interesting use, such as for delegation of authority and things like that. Um, but in this iteration of it, it's not really viable. I don't know. Uh, this is, I feel like that was a painful session and we've through six of them. Um, any any uh, suggestions from anyone on other ways of doing this? Um, uh, I can give background on most of these. Um, and and some of them are 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 obvious. This one, Actually, as I get to one that maybe it shouldn't be stalled, does anyone know anything about this unified deep linking? It's deep linking is something we really want to have, and and I, 
there's been a discussion. There's a there's a GitHub issue on the on Larry's RFCs about this specific topic. I, but yeah. I think the interesting thing is that what I've seen is that the format that a large amount of the format that was proposed in that RFC has actually been implemented. Yeah. So, but not the whole, the whole thing shouldn't be adopted. So we need a simpler RFC. So it should either be stay and propose or go to stalled. I would put it towards stalled and create a new RFC is, but I six is honestly. Okay. Okay. I'll take a look at that one. And, and see about that trust over IP stack that's moved to trust over IP rich schemas. Co-protocols is uh, an idea that Daniel Hardman had of, of linking protocols, and we have the mechanism of parent threads and threads. Um, so I don't think there's a need to formalize this. This is basically how you use threads and parent threads. Um, so again, I don't think anything's likely to happen. OOB through redirect. This probably should be reviewed. Um, and and maybe this is this is likely. So this is the idea that instead of having to put into a, a QR code um, the entire out of band invitation, you have a redirect, and all you need is a URL and the QR code. That is part of OOB, but I don't know what this one seven hundred brings to the to the game. So um, I doubt, and I have not reviewed it. So we'll take a look at that one. So those are the concept ones. Um, DITCOM over XMPP. Is anyone planning on implementing that? Anyone using XMPP? I know this was to get around firewall issues um, and things, but I don't think um, that's their sync connection, I believe, is obsolete based on the did rotate and things like that that we've got. This was on, did, uh, I think, related to did peer one. Um, no work, as far as I know, is going on with payments. So we can certainly mark that as stalled. Um, predefined identities, I know that was used in, I believe, in, what was it, static? Aries agents, but I don't think that's still viable. Okay, uh, evidence evidence exchange. Um, this is one that um, Dan Gisalfi put in when he was with IBM, and it was to do with um, how evidence gets collected and documented for issuance of VCs, I believe. But anyway, again, um, not part of the protocols. Um, certainly could be revived. That's one interesting one that could be revived, but not interesting. Coin flip is just a demonstration one, an example of a protocol. Um, transfer policy, don't know what that one is. Anyone have any knowledge of that one? Yes, I should look at it before I summarily dismiss it. Help me discover. I believe this is to do with, um, yeah, I don't even know. Rich schema again. So those ones did auth Z. I believe this would be a auth Z protocol done over didcom. Um, can't see that likely to have any movement going forward. Um, JWE envelope, um, we are not using that as an envelope. There's a DIDCOM v2 envelope, so that's not viable. Um, HP over DIDCOM, um, the Aries Go folks did some things on that, but when we added um, DIDCOM RPC, um, which are, which has been demonstrated and is implemented in, as an Akapai plugin and also implemented in um, uh, Credo and 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 Bifold. Um, it really replaces this and, and makes this unnecessary. Proof negotiation. This should probably be reviewed.
purpose de de decorator has been replaced by goal codes and um, really is uh, adding a purpose as a decorator where it may or may not get included in something is is not very uh, similar to the please act where we find it it doesn't really help in an implementation that if you need this it should be in the protocol and not separated and that's what gold codes does um, rich schema rich credential rich presentation rich schema mapping rich schema cred def all of those go away um, this is the companion to code protocols as a concept um, but again it's not happening Linking binary objects to credentials. Um, this could be an interesting one. We definitely do this type of thing. Um, so this is the idea that you've got a binary object that you want to put into a into a credential. Um, for photographs and the like, we use the data uh, URL and the data protocol, data colon. Um, and that works very well for small binary objects. So this would be covered. It also works well for things like um, JSON, uh, a, a, a claim that holds JSON, if that's necessary. But um, I'm, for large binary objects, this might have some interesting components. Anyone familiar with this one? Look at uh, how close... I don't... Go ahead. I don't know if it's had any progress, but I do remember that I really liked its... its uh the proposed uh the proposal and it could i think still have some merit in terms of okay. large large binary objects okay how does that uh compare to the media sharing protocol the what uh there's a cradle implements a protocol uh I think it's managed out of the 2060.io uh, team. Right. Okay. Yeah. Media share. It's oh, media share. Right. right. Yeah. I've seen their demos of that. And it's excellent. And, yeah, and well, that's their, their rich chat. Yeah. So it's a way to kind of like uh, pass along instructions to download a, a binary, like a document. Okay. So, I'm wondering, so this one. I'm wondering actually why it, why it's not. Uh, it's actually an open question I was planning on asking. Is there seems to be a subset of Bitcoin protocols that are quite useful, but they're not explicitly called out in Aries RFCs. Yeah. Uh, and that's part of the goal of you know of 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 this site is to expand this to be Didcom protocols overall. So mm. we could call out, here's the Aries ones, but we can also call out the ones that are Didcom V2, for example, and, and things like that, and try to get a, a, an aligned uh, and, and pull those from multiple sources, not just from Aries. That's that's what I was thinking. This this website, just so you know, is is generated via a, a Bash script that processes the, mm. um, the current protocol. It's just a GitHub action. And, oh, and, can, and can certainly be pulled in from other repositories. And so the idea I had was that that script could be managed such that it could pull in and organize other other um, sources of, credit, of of protocols. Okay, so that um, one for sure is review. Um, this one having a 693 number, I think this also deserves a review and it has a catchy title. So I want to look at that. Um, these two, moving them to demonstrated, uh, clearly uh, these are being used in um, Credo and, and Bifold and the BC Wallet for sure. So these are definitely demonstrated at minimum. Um, data URLs for images. I talked about that back in the whatever it was, the binary one. Um, so data URLs are at least covered. This is definitely demonstrated. Um, the person credential has an image in it and it is stored as a data URL. The data URL allows the um, 
person that wants to, or the the code that wants to display the data from a credential to at least know the mind type of the data, if it's something other than just a string or a number. Um, did rotate, I think, is already to the accepted level and implemented in, in the different libraries. Did come RPC, definitely demonstrated in two libraries. And then 809 is the one we already talked about, and it too is, is now um, demonstrated. So I think that was good. Um, any objections to the ones that didn't get review to be updated according to this new status list? Did anyone see anything that hung out? I guess all, one of my questions was on the around the JWE envelope, or there's a couple of them that you mentioned. You're like, you don't think that they're ever going to be implemented. Are those yeah. things uh, stalled? Also, kind of gives the indication that it's going to be, it could come out of stalled. Do you think retired is appropriate for ones where like this is never coming back? <laughs> so you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So. As I said, I mean, my rationale for the two states is is the original thought was, how do we get rid of these ones that aren't going to go anywhere? And, and stalled is essentially a parking lot to say, yeah, it's done. So um, and, and, and my distinction of having two of them is retired means that it actually was used, got to at least demonstrated or accepted. And then we looked at it and we deprecated it and removed it. So that's the difference between retired, which means, yeah, it, it had some acceptance and it was used for a while, but now it's no longer being used. So if, so you're likely to run across it in a code base, for example, um, whereas stall is, it was an idea, hey, this is good, and then never went anywhere. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, I think that makes sense. I mean, I, the, the nice thing is, you know, this list is very long and it is confusing to people. So getting yes. rid of them is is my goal. And what I'm trying to say is, yeah, stall is not anything you want to go near. <laughs> However, you might find something ideas. And, and yes, we don't want to completely. I mean, people put good thought into these things. They spent time and wrote it up and presented it to this group and decided and got enough that people said, yeah, let's merge that. There's, there is valuable work in that. I know, you know, things like yep. the, um, uh, what's the one that the co-protocols, Daniel put a ton of thought into that. Um, it's just, it's not likely to go anywhere. Yep. Okay. And I open to any other term as well. I mean, that's just a label. Um, okay. Steven, uh, what's, what's going to happen to, uh, 0036 and 37 since AIP one APIs are getting deprecated? Um, so those would move, to, those are examples of ones that would move to retire. Okay. So, um, yeah, those ones, oh, sorry, I'm looking for them. There they are. So these ones that are obviously still very actively in use, but um, Akapai, in, in Akapai, we've decided to say, hey, those are deprecated. So any new people coming into the community would not use them. Anyone in the community, anyone using Akapai, the product, the uh, product should, should be migrating off of issue credential and present proof to their... Um, later equivalents um, uh, 53 and 54. So they should be moving off them. Eventually we change adopted to retire. Will that same happen to 0593 with 809? 0593, yes, yeah. Okay. Now, we haven't even announced deprecating this one yet. Right. I think it's, yeah, I understand. I just wanted to understand. Yeah. But that's the flow. That's, that's the flow we're trying to do. 
Okay. You know, it's good. connections, connections is the same thing. Zero, uh, zero, one sixty. Where is it? And we don't want to do that. It's still adopted, but we want it out. So we want to get it to retire. Sounds good. Um, I think these are our slam dunks as well. I went through these yesterday and, and James is spot on on these. So attachments, cross-domain messaging, um, best practices on present proof, acts, all of these are in AIPs and all of them have been implemented across the board in the, in the repositories. Um, credential notification um, is, is in the AIPs, it's less used, although um, we're certainly using it in Akapai and in, in Credo. So there, is there an argument for adopted on those, but I'm okay with leaving it there. Um, yeah, same for the rest of these. Pickup two, we have the pickup V1 that is still um, being used and I believe is adopted, um, but V2 and, and a future revocation notification also should be moved to. So, um, Definitely agree that uh, that with these status changes, anyone see any reason not to change to these ones? Okay. So what I'd like to do um, is I will temporarily um change these one remove these ones from my pr um second i will include the ones that um J james suggested and add those to my pr and then i would like to get this one approved and and merged are people good with that This has been out for a couple of weeks, so in theory, people have had a chance to take a look at it. And definitely, yeah, the ones that we talked about today um, that we moved to review um, should definitely be looked at. So the linking binary objects, for sure. I think that's a, yeah, could have some good, good stuff in it. Sorry for the pain of that, but it actually got through and it was useful, I think. I think this is an important change to make to um, to clean up where we are and have a more accessible um, repository of protocols. Then as I say, um, I would add, and again, if anyone wants to help out, it's fun stuff to go through these and, and clean things up, it feels good. Um, I did put a to-do list of things that I would like to see in this um, website. Um, so there's a list of things. Um, stalled status is one of those. Um, there's a few documents that I want to build out. I'd like to add a DITCOM v2 status. I'd like to add an AIP3 um, status that at minimum is a start on what we think AIP3 would be. So all of these are sort of to-dos that are, are welcome to be included. Um, so if anyone's, um, you know, has free time that would like to help out with this, please connect. Otherwise I'll, um, as I find time, we'll, we'll be updating these to move them forward. With the community support, of course, these are all pull requests that get reviewed in meetings like this. All right, um, the last topic I had, unless anyone has things they wanna add to the agenda is um, adding DITCOM v2 support to Akapai. So in the Akapug meeting yesterday, there was um, a fair amount of detail gone over. So I asked um, the team that presented to um, just give a quick summary to the rest of the community on um, what they've, uh, first impressions of adding DITCOM v2 support to Akapai. Um, also hoping if someone is here from the, um, 
credo community what, what um, their thoughts are on that. But uh, Daniel, Colton, Mike, uh, who, who wants to talk? Oh, Daniel Bloom was here earlier and he had said that he would do this. Colton? Um, I can uh, jump in and give a, a, a quick rundown. Um, yeah, I don't know. Did I, Daniel give you a warning on this? I texted with him yesterday and I thought he would connect. So, um, yeah, really... yeah. Um, okay, good. He, he mentioned it, but I, I saw him on the call earlier and I was expecting him to take it. But, yeah, exactly. So did um, I. <laughs> I don't see him anymore. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, um, how thorough of a rundown are you looking for? I, I mean, I was just looking for, a, you know, if people are interested, they can they can look at the um, Acapug recording. It's been posted, but I was just saying you could just give, you know, five minutes, three minute overview of how far you got and 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 the steps you're taking, the approach you're taking. Um, yeah, sure. Um, so, yeah, we we've. Um, started to um dig into uh some 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 rough implementation stuff um we have akapai able to accept and unpack a did come v2 message um it doesn't actually process the message at all we haven't implemented any handlers yet um but we can see the unpacked results. Um, and uh, yeah, our, our next steps are gonna be to to start working in um, seeing what, what handling uh, messages is gonna look like. Um, and um, yeah, so let me let me see if I can find some some links. Or yeah, uh, anyone curious? Um, and as Stephen mentioned, a, a little bit more thorough of a demo um, is on the Acabug call from yesterday. But um, we we have a branch on the Indicio fork of Acapai. That's the diff uh, from main, um, and uh, we're using a new, well, not new. Um, new to Akapai, uh, did come toolbox sort of a thing. Uh, it's a library that we put together that has um, a lot of uh, kind of quick and easy tools to use um, for uh, did come v2 development. Um, currently it's in, in DCO's GitHub, but if there's sufficient interest on, on that front, we'd be happy to move it to the diff or, or somewhere um, community appropriate. But um, yeah, but yeah, that's that's kind of the, the basics of, of where we're at. Excellent. Um, yeah, it was super interesting to look at what what work had been done, seeing message a message actually received and and unpacked. Um, the question of the handler should are we able to reuse a an existing handler or do we have to re-implement each one depending on whether we receive a v1 v2 um, things like um, how you how do you decide when a connection is a v1 or a v2 do you have to decide even actually which is kind of an interesting question um but you know when you go to send a message obviously that's going to be a, a decision you make what you receive is 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 what you receive but when you send a message um deciding whether you're sending a v1 or v2 will be interesting and of course the always yeah. ever present okay how do we transition so that everybody gets transitioned over those those topics are going to come up in the community yeah, for sure. Cool. Thanks. Sorry for that. But really, talk to Daniel about. 
I suspect, I'm guessing, I always think of when Daniel comes in and out of meetings, I'm always thinking, baby, something's going on. All right. He has a new kid. I guess that had needed context. Daniel has a newborn in the house, getting getting older now, but still pretty new. So he's busy. All right. Those are the topics I had for today. Uh, any other uh, topics or should we end the meeting? Stephen, would you be willing to give at least an elevator pitch about Trusted Web? Ah, always. Um, oh, okay. Um, let me, uh, if you don't mind, I'll just call up some notes to remind me. Two seconds, almost there. Okay. Uh, I won't go through this entire, this is the slide deck, but it, it will allow me to share this. I'll grab that. Let me jump back to the chat. Right. All right. Quick, quick run through. Did trusted did web. Um, this uh, slide deck goes through a lot of things. Backgrounds on dids, ledgers, web based dids, and why we don't like it. Uh, why we think something more is needed. Um, did web is not sufficiently capable. Uh, there is not a sufficiently capable dominant did method for public dids. So, did web is not sufficiently capable capable and the other did methods are are not dominant across and so it, when that happens you need another standard so we created a new standard um did tdw is that um there is a full specification and two implementations available um th this is the the quick one though similar to did web but with a ledgerless verifiable history um where you would find a did web did.json file, there is a did.json L that is not a typo, JSON lines. We, um, Andrew and Brian designed the feature and um, came up with the storage mechanism they use and discovered that it actually is a standard that other people use. Amazon uses it um, and, and is a thing already. So we, just adapted it and allowed us to change the the thing from a .text file to a a uh, a JSON L file. So lines of JSON. So that's what um, uh, did TDW is um, the 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 document that you resolve is actually a lines where every line represents a version of the did doc. Um, basically, you retrieve that log, you process and verify the log, and you get all the versions, they're all chained together so that there's link links between them all and every version is signed by the controller of the DID. Um, there's a self-certifying identifier or a SCID um, embedded in the DID and that enables portability with history. So, so you can actually change the location on the web of where the DID resides and the SCID remains the same and um, and you get the full history continuing. Um, did it has a path to the URL, and uh, so the we added did URL path handling and made it completely aligned with the did core spec for how it is done. And you can override it. You could use this technique with other did methods, so it's very um, compliant with with dids. Um, but allows you to resolve a did slash path to file to actually finding that file in the same, you know, in a relative location to where uh, a did.json on did web is stored or the did.json file is. And then finally, this magic who is, it's the thing that I really want to see take off. I think it's a brilliant idea. When you do did slash who is, you get a verifiable presentation back that 
contains credentials about the did, where the did is the subject of the credentials. Um, so that's the quick overview. Um, two, two implementations, it's less than a thousand lines of, of TypeScript code and about 1500 lines in Python um, processing the, uh, so they have done uh, tests of, I think 10,000 versions of a, I think it was 10,000 versions of a did. So changing a did a 10,000 times, it took under two seconds in TypeScript and under a second and a half in Python to process the list to verify it all. And it was under a make of file space. So neither big nor uh, long to process. So that's the type of um, things you get. Um, the JSON lines are, are this um, version ID, version time, a hash over the entire entry, some parameters, the did doc itself, and then a data integrity proof to show that the update was made by the authorized party, that the, that the controller of the did in the previous version of the did doc was the one that signed the update to change the did doc from one version to another. And all of it is based on, on the idea of, of, it's all centered on the did doc. So the input to processing and things like that is a did doc, completely generic to the letter did core spec compliant did doc. And every time you want to update it, you pass the, um, new did doc that you want you just edit it in whatever technique you do you make the changes necessary and then you process it getting converting it um to evolve it from the previous state into this state and produce this line that does that um, i could go on that's what a did log entry looks like with the six elements a hash a version a version time some parameters. Um, in this case, um, a did doc is put in in the first record as a value, which is that's the entire did doc right there. In future versions, this value becomes patch. And this um, data structure is a JSON patch. Um, Everything uses for the hashing and the signing down here in the data integrity proof uses JSON uh, canonicalization schemes, JCS. So um, the dependencies in did TDW are pretty minor. There's a hashing scheme that you can specify which hashing scheme as long as it's acceptable in this in the spec. Um, there is JCS, there is um, uh, JSON patch, and there is a um, encoding scheme, and and that those are the only dependencies. Oh, sorry, and the data integrity proof um, using EDDSA J JCS twenty twenty two, and then there's the ability to add other um, crypto suites for this data integrity proof. So not any fancy um, dependencies or anything like that. Just a straightforward. Um, uh, implementation, which is how uh, we were able to, the, the developers were able to do this small little bit of code to produce um, the full functionality. The only thing not supported yet in this implementation is um, pre-rotation of keys, which is a supported feature um, or is in the spec uh, and will be supported in the implementations, which is should be pretty easy because it just uses builds on the the same techniques for hashing we've done before so that's that will be a a minor addition to it and then um multi-signature support where the authorizations can have multiple signatures where um it's based on the uh what's called verifiable conditions which is another standard that that is um, available at W3C. It hasn't gone a lot of, I don't know how many implementations there are, but it's pretty straightforward in, in being able to say, oh, 
the uh, to be valid um the the data integrity proof must have multiple signatures on it and there must be a threshold of three of five signatures or whatever the condition says and that's just a um that technique is just a of another verification method in a did doc so nothing fancy um as far as that goes so that's that's an overview of it hopefully that helps thank you very much Stephen. love to talk about it and as I say, we're going to be um, looking at doing an implementation of adding this to Akapai to see um, what it takes and and what we learn from that. We have we we're very successful in doing this as an iterative process. We had a set of features we wanted, but really did not have any idea what it would look like. And by having Brian and Andrew implementing and trading off ideas as they both sort of independently implemented, got phenomenal results. I'm blown away by how cool they what they came up with and how cool how easy it is how how straightforward it is wow that was selling that was a pitch sorry about that all right any other topics for today thanks for asking bruce all right have a delightful day. We'll, uh, Sam will be back next week, I'm sure, and organized and ready for another session. Take care, all. Thanks, Thank everyone. You. Bye.